film shoot is over with Raz Al Khaimo, which leaves me with a few days around this fantastic playground for supercars that is Central Dubai. I have been invited down by Tamini Classics to check out their stunning collection of classic cars. And what's even better is, last night they said, send us your info, we'll put you on the company insurance, and you can take your pick of our classic car crop and go and drive anything that you want. So without further ado, let's head inside, see what they've got, and grab the keys to something tasty. Let's hit it. regular viewers of my channel will know that most of the cars that I feature are modern day supercars but when you get an invite to drive cars like this you can't turn it down so without me wandering around prodding a guess at what's what let's get Asil from Tamini to tell us what it's all about this is a 1968 218 SL SL so Mercedes came out with so SL stands for sports lightweight sports lightweight which is ironic because this car is neither sporty nor lightweight <laughs> At it's, all. it's a beautiful comfortable <laughs> tank what's yes. nice about these 280s the pagodas they call them these pagodas uh, sound nice they sound good especially uh, this one yeah so the SL should stand for sounds lovely exactly really? yeah, there you yeah. Go. <laughs> Are you prone to an occasional fist bump? <laughs> yeah, nice you know. uh, So th this, re this replaced the 190 SL. But yeah, so it's uh, essentially, um, if you go into a Mercedes showroom in 1968 and yep. hypothetically ask them for the non-existent AMG version of this, yes. that's what this would be. That's what it would be. And it's recently been fully restored. Completely. Because um, it's new. I mean, this looks like it is out of the showroom. I feel like I've yeah. stepped back in time and we're having a fresh experience of what this car would be like. Yeah, it's a fully restored, uh, it's a completely restored to ATSL, but with some tasteful upgrades. So the, instead of a 2.8, they bored it up to 3.3, so it's got a nice meaty bit of power. Fantastic. They chucked in a usable air conditioning system, but yeah. that's in Germany. I mean, uh, for sure. Know, it's good Today? enough for Germany, but it's not good enough for Dubai. <laughs> uh, oh, so bet. we beefed it up even more. By taking the roof off? And, yeah, exactly. <laughs> So I suppose I'd better introduce what's happening here. Uh, this is Asil from Tamini Classics. So tell us a little bit about Tamini. I thought it'd be good to go out in a car that you guys have, the kind of car that you guys have worked on, uh, to give it a bit more of interesting context. But what's it all about? How did it start, etc.? cetera? Um, so the chairman semi-accidentally went to an auction about eight years ago. Right. Uh, and then accidentally bought a car you okay. tend to do. Yes. Um, brought it back over here, loved it, enjoyed it, um, and then got the bug really, so it became a bigger and bigger collection. Quite a serious bug. It's yeah. Become substantial. Yeah, a massive sort of predator sci fi movie shirt sized bug. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> um, and then we decided, right, well, let's make it uh, turn the hobby into a business as well. Yeah. So all the cars are owned by us. Okay. Uh, we drive them, we sell them, we buy them. Yeah. We share them with Dubai, which is quite important because yes. the classic car culture here for American cars is quite mature. Yeah. But for the rarer stuff, you know, some of the uh, some of the rarer stuff like the older Porsches and Ferraris, it's quite immature. So we, we, okay. we like to think that hopefully we're part of making that move forward. The market. Yeah. Yeah. Fantastic. Uh, tell you what, though, I I think cars have got more uncomfortable. Even yeah. the sort of luxury Grand Tours now yeah. are not comfortable. Well, I don't think it's because of suspension necessarily. I think it's the, the tech in the seats. Exactly. I mean, this has just basically got half a sheep in it, hasn't it? Exactly. It's so springy. And there's horse hair in it. Yeah. It's wonderful. It's beautiful. Uh, it's been a long time since I drove a modern car that really was comfortable for long distance driving. Sure, yeah. We went long distance in a Cayenne Turbo the other day. Yeah. And it just... Maybe it's my body shaped it, right? Yeah, yeah. Exactly. No, I agree. So the premise of the day then, we've got two cars which we sort of selected to go out and drive in a minute. Yep. Which are? So we have a 1963 Ferrari 250 Lusa. So she's, <laughs> she's the... I 
mean, I didn't want to say those words, just in case you were like, no, actually, we better not take that out because it's like batshit expensive. Uh, but it, that's happening. <laughs> and uh, so yeah, that's the plan with that car. Yes. Uh, Which coming from an F12 owner, it's nice bit of legacy. Yeah, there are a few it's generations between There are quite them. a few generations, but it's nice to see where it all started. Now the plan is after that, because obviously when you think Ferrari's competitor, you think Lamborghini. Absolutely. But that wasn't the case before about 1965, when Lamborghini was still making tractors. Tractors, right, yeah. So uh, the 350 GT, in a way, was a response to the Luso. Sure. Um, it was, Enzo, I don't like what you just said to me, I'm going to build a better car than you. Yeah. And we'll leave that for you to decide whether you achieve that or not. Whoa, lean back. Wow, it's actually like I'm in some kind of retro lazy boy chair. This is so chilled and laid back. Wow. Now, classics I am not familiar with, but how cool is this, right? I mean, check out those for keys. When was the last time you saw a car key that looked like your back door key? Assel has also told me that there is no indicators whatsoever as to what any of these buttons mean. Down to the fact that the uh, gear knob doesn't even have any markings on it at all. So he said, good luck finding reverse. I feel like everything's delicate because it's mucho expensivo. <laughs> Lap belts. 70s seat belts, lap belts. Look at this. Look at th look at that. Yeah, that's going to do nothing at all. But in the spirit of good humour, I'll put it on anyway. Right. Is that reverse? Oh no, that's forwards. That too is forwards. <laughs> that feels like it might be. No, that's forwards. <laughs> yes, backwards. I found. Wow. Oh yes, by the way, this car has no wing mirrors. No wing mirrors, that's all. That's, that's weird. It's like because of a race car. So uh, thankfully though, the A, B and C pillars are like spaghetti thin. So uh, visibility is like I'm in a massive goldfish bowl. It's like being in a big goldfish bowl. The visibility is amazing. It's fantastic. Despite the fact that there's no wing mirrors at all. Yeah. Other than that though, rather splendid. Am I pointing the right direction? Yeah. yeah. Cool. Crazy guys, this is absolutely monumental, and um, it feels like I'm steering a boat because the wheel's so big. No power steering. No power steering. When you have no power steering, you need the bigger wheel. And of course, what classic car drive experience wouldn't be complete without some retro driving gloves? Got your hand apparel. This far back. We have so. someone who's used to paddle shift, automated, airbagging, well, it's, drifting, it's and everything. Fabulous, isn't you're it? Doing a, you're doing a lovely job. Um, so, once upon a time, there's a chap called Ferruccio in Santa Agata. Hey, in Italy. Ferruccio. Ferruccio! With two C's and yep. many vowels. And um, <laughs> he built air conditioning units, made some money, built tractors, made some money, bought a few Ferraris and Maseratis, went to an old man called Enzo Ferrari. Look, your. your oh, yeah. uh, your gearboxes need work, your clutches need work. And so he told Enzo, look, I think you should work on this, work on that. I am an engineer, it may better your cars. Yeah. Enzo said, look, you build tractors for a living. What do you know? Please get out of my office. Then Ferruccio said, okay, read between the lines. All right, how about um, this? Yeah. Uh, and I'm gonna, I'm gonna build a better car than you. So uh, he got one uh, Giotto Bizzarini on board, who was ex-Ferrari, the chap who was uh, Fantastic. in charge of the I love that. So he poached him, did he, or did he leave? No, so in, in, the, in about 1964, you had what was called the fall of the castle which is where about six major executives from 
Ferrari left the company. It's Italians with big egos. I mean, you know, things yeah. get hot, and then uh, sure. I go. Hey. Um, yeah. And so, so, <laughs> so Pizzarini was one of them. And he's the one who, uh, who headed the GTO 250 GTO project. Oh, so he's got some cred then. Exactly. Yeah, it's a good CV. It's a good resume. Yeah. And so Ferruccio told them, okay, every horsepower above 300 or something, I'm going to give you this many million lira. So uh, yeah, Giotto Bizzarini came sensitive. up with this 3.5 litre V12. Yeah. It was overpowered, it was essentially a race engine, so they tuned it down to more grand touring use. Yes. Unfortunately though, the engine, and stop me when you're bored. No, fire away, it's interesting. The, uh, if the, it's crap, I'll cut you out, don't worry. Exactly, yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> fire away, out. fire away. And no wing mirrors at all. Exactly, there we go. I'm just gonna put this into first, just in case we need to get... Uh, no, not no, good no, anymore. No, 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 Aldi, no. Aldi. So the engine had the carbs on the top, yes. so it didn't actually fit into the sleek concept body of this car. Okay. So when they unveiled it, they unveiled the shell, weighted down with some big bricks, cement blocks, <laughs> and they put the engine on the side. Yeah, this is inside, and they bolted it shut. Amazing. That's a good. Right. This engine has been used, James, from 1964 essentially up until yeah. 2010. Amazing. So you know? this is what made. The what eventually was the last of the Lamborghini Murcielago engines, right? The SV, same block. Yep, same block, but double the capacity. I mean, isn't that incredible? It's nuts. Beautiful. Well, first impressions are it's pretty friendly. You know, it's not a, it's not like a sort of clunky handful. It's really smooth, and you can you sort of you, know, you sort of drop your hands and pilot it from the bottom of the wheel because yeah. it's such a big wheel. Yeah. It's really, I've not been in seats so laid back though. I mean, I felt like I'm on a sofa. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know? This is, this is, this is when luxury meant, uh, look at that. That's this good. is when luxury meant just meant, the finest materials. Chilling out. Yeah. Good ergonomics, you know. They just, I mean, every old car, every classic car has a completely different feel to modern day, because they literally each have their own character. Yeah, yeah. I mean, just from hopping in this versus the SL, whole experience changes, even the smell. Smell changes. Yeah, there's you smell more oil in this because there's a lot more oil. Yeah. Uh, sure. Yeah, absolutely. All right, let's drop a window and hear this original V12. High revs, high revs, high revs. See already, we're in the red one. Mm. You know what I mean? Yeah, like, yeah, yeah, there's yeah. there's a reason it's it's of, of legend. Exactly. You know? Exactly. Um, the, the material just I don't, just getting in it. It's a massive sense of occasion. Exactly, it's and beautiful. it's a, it takes you back in time as well. It was called Lusso because Lusso means luxury in Italian. Um, the luxury Indeed. back then was great grand touring capabilities, the finest materials, and no distraction from the job of driving, which is nice. You know, there's. Uh, it's amazing. The important gauges there. The important stuff. Temperatures. Hot, cold, oil, water. Mm. Do it. Lovely RPM there and whatnot. Again, non-labeled knobs over Nothing here. Nothing labeled, so you have to memorize the layout of this. Precisely. It's lined up. There are no seat belts in this car. Oh, cool. Optional extra. Awesome. Oh, no. Fantastic. <laughs> <laughs> right. Doth the glove again. You've got right. space there for your bags and, and, and whatnot. It's very F12, actually. Yeah, Like, yeah, it really is. Yeah. I mean, the F12 still has this this rear parcel shelf with these straps. Fantastic. Still has that, albeit there's a lot more carbon fiber. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> um, diamond, yeah, diamond, diamond stitched. Stitch. I've got diamond stitched in the center of my seat, not Lovely. in the back here. Mm. The back here is all uh, sort of plain. Mm. But, um, yeah, it's nice to see them giving a nod to history, you know, mm. including these little details like back Precisely. straps and, and, and things. Maserati still do that as well, the little V-shape and the dashboard, yeah, that's, course, that's yeah. 3,500. Right, initiate launch sequence, yep. you're telling me, is it's not as simple as turning a key. No, so you, you turn do it Do I fully? turn it fully mm -hmm. and then press? Let, let that... Oh, will that go longer? Yes, yes. Feels more free revving than the... A lighter engine. Yeah. And one litre smaller, well, sorry, half a litre smaller as well. Handbrake? Yeah. Wow, that, that. I mean, that's in a funny place. <laughs> wow. Okay, so just before we roll out in this to fill me with confidence, estimated value? Uh, two million dollars. No hassle then. Cool no, two million. A cool two mil. So uh, I'll take it cool steady then. <laughs> I mean, we're not 
even out of the car park yet, but the throw on the uh, gear stick I prefer as well. But so your it's... preference of car is the 350, yeah? The Sorry? Three... Your, your preference of these two is the 350? It depends on the mood. To depends be on the mood. Okay. Depends on the mood. If I'm in a more of a grand touring mood with the occasional nice scream, then it's the 350. Okay. Um, seat belts versus no seat belts at all, yeah, of course. Yeah. Depending on, on how uh, dangerous it, you want to live your life. It's tough. It's tough, James. Um, it's tough. <laughs> it's very difficult. <laughs> this um, is beautiful. I mean, I'm 500 yards down the road and I already prefer that. Yeah. The other one's a bit shorter and a little yeah. bit less rifle yes. bolt actually. So according to our research, this is the only Luso ever delivered with a 250 short wheelbase specification gearbox as standard. So okay. there's a client who had some pull with Ferrari, maybe even a personal relationship with Enzo, who said no, I would like the 250 short wheelbase gearbox, I'd prefer the throw of it. This is beautiful. It's that is a beautiful throw. I uh, and so this is the original box? Yep, matching throughout. So Well, it's fantastic, considering that the other one is a more modern ZF, is it? Yep, it's a ZF from 66, and this is uh, whatever it might be, probably in-house gearbox from 63. Uh, well, it's, it's, it's gorgeous, Actually, really the, nice. This gearbox is four, five years older than uh, the car itself. So right. imagine, yeah, for sure. imagine buying an F12 Berlinetta and saying, no, I'd like the 5.9 gearbox. They're not going to do They're that. They're not going to do that. No matter no. how tight you are with Ferrari. Yeah. Gonna... Also, pedal placement is much better for heel and toe. Yeah. Like no. when you depress the brake, your foot lines up with the, the throttle rather than it being on the throttle like the 350 GT. Exactly. Now you see, I really like this. Yeah, yeah it's I really wonderful. like this. It's fun. And you'll see when it gets up to temperature, yeah. once that oil is nice and thin and moving around, yeah, it's, it's lovely. But driving position is nicer, yeah. closer the buckets. to the wheel, yeah. 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 The seats are giving me some like reassuring support. Yeah. And I prefer the engine is quite free revving. It's light, it's got yeah. a nice fizz to it. Colombo V12. Lovely, yeah. yeah. It, because having not spent too much time in classic cars, it's nice for a change for me to be learning something. I don't get to drive classics that often. I sure as hell don't get to drive a 250 Lusso that often. <laughs> <laughs> so to experience it and find out that it is actually a beauty, it's, I mean, to drive this, it's not a complete pile. And yet it is a car from an era which was famous for being terrible. Yeah. <laughs> so, and you're piloting these cars. Yeah. You really are. For our time at Tamini Classics, massive thanks to the guys here and of course Asil who's been driving me around all day. It's been phenomenal to experience those cars, but big dream of mine to be able to go out in such an iconic Ferrari as the 250 Luso. Anyway guys, as always, thanks for watching. I'll see you next time. Ciao.